Hi, my name is Rachel and I live here in this woodland, completely off-grid, with my husband Fraser and my daughter Grace. Um, we're going to go for a little bit of a walk uh, this afternoon and then Grace is going to have a nap, hopefully. And then we'll be able to have a chat about um, off-grid life versus normal life and um, why it works for us. <gasps> Do you need to keep that on? Hi, so today we're going to be looking at the difference. <laughs> That's what happens when you film outside. Let's try that again. Hi, today we're going to be looking at off grid life versus normal life and talking about the similarities and differences and the pros and cons um, of an off grid life. For us, my husband Fraser bought this land 15 years ago. Uh, it was an empty field when he bought it. He's planted over 3,000 trees since then uh, and has made a woodland. And we live here collecting rainwater. We're in the middle of adding a big solar power system. Um, and there's some videos on that that we've done. I'll put the links in the description if you want to have a look. Um, <laughs> so that is our off-grid life. Not saying it looks like that for everybody else. Um, but this is what we have found to be the advantages and disadvantages compared to normal life. So the first thing I wanted to talk about really was security. Security um, when you are off grid is really important because you have got so many tools, you just tend to have so much more equipment and wherever we are we're always thinking are our possessions safe? Unfortunately we live in an area where people get broken into and they have everything taken. All of their plant, all of their um, gear, all of their equipment gets stolen. Um, we know it's happened, uh, it happens to people we know um, and we have to take it seriously. We have two dogs as well, uh, you might have seen them in some of our other videos, um, Blue and Luna. They are Italian Mastiffs and they are big. Um, and whilst they are mostly friendly, um, they don't like intruders very much, so it's nice having them around as well. You might think that people wouldn't bother breaking in for the equipment that we've got, but we actually got broken into once before, before we lived here. Um, they broke into a container that we had here and um, stole a sack barrow. So there you go. You can never underestimate these people. Whilst having all that security sounds like a really good thing, it can be a bit of a nightmare because although it slows people getting in it also really slows people getting out so <laughs> trying to get out especially now that we've had a baby trying to leave the house is an absolute nightmare and I have to allow um, 10 to 15 minutes if I'm here on my own 10 to 15 minutes from the moment I pick Grace up in the car seat and say right let's go to the moment I lock the final gate is about 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. And if you forget something, it is the worst feeling in the world. Another thing about security is because we are in the middle of nowhere, um, I don't really like being here at night on my own. Um, I haven't been on my own here at night since Grace was born. And um, so that has had a bit of a knock-on effect to Fraser's social life. Um, so if we're out, we're generally out together in the evening because being here on my own um, in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a woodland does sometimes make me feel a bit nervous. Um, I don't want to feel that way and it's something I'm working on um, and I hope in future when everything is just that bit more secure I won't feel that way anymore. But for now, we've got a bit of an agreement that whilst we go through this transition time before we build, um, Fraser stays with me at night uh, so I don't get scared. Okay, so um, next is household jobs. Um, you wouldn't think that would be that different being off-grid, but there are some major differences which make it much harder. So for us, um, everyday jobs are made dif more difficult by the fact that not everything is on demand, they're on demand all the time. So things like water. If you watch our video about water filtration, and I will put the video link in the description, you'll see that our system requires topping up every now and then. So we have three tanks, two up high and then one down low and the water um, travels from the top tanks down into the bottom tanks um, and we have to top that bottom tank up. Um, 
and you can run out at any moment we try and top it up regularly but you can still get caught out you can get caught out when you're doing washing up so let's just say grace has gone to sleep she's having a nap and um, i decide to do the washing up and the next thing i know i've run out of water and i'm having to go outside for 10 minutes uh, to top up the water um very annoying worst the worst time it can happen is when you're in the shower um and you can be in the shower and all of a sudden nothing you hear the pump and you think oh no we're out of water i'm gonna have to get out and i'm gonna have to go and fill it up that is really really bad when it's winter um and you've got to hope there's someone in the house with you who will kindly go out and fill it up for you because going out in the towel is not fun another thing with the water is that it's not just about whether or not it's topped up it's whether or not you've had enough rain so some jobs require so much water things like washing the car sometimes that just has to wait because we can't be washing the car if we are low on water and we're going to need it for drinking and need it for washing our clothes it just has to wait and living where we live our car is always filthy it's either muddy or it's dusty from the harvests uh, from the agricultural land around here and so sometimes you just have to accept your car's not going to look very smart so another thing is power there's been times when we've been depending on generators for electricity which um, I've talked about before um, in some of my other videos and it's not it's not ideal at all um, and that can run out can run out of fuel and we've had it before where we've been thrown into darkness because the generators run out of fuel and then one of us has to go out with a torch open up the shed and fill the generator up um, so that we can have some electricity again not so bad in the summer but in the winter when it's freezing and it's raining and it's cold that can be really really annoying as well as the household jobs that you already have to do being a bit harder there's also other jobs that you don't have to do in a normal house or that um, that don't have the same level of importance in a normal house but they're crucial that we do them here things like for us um, chopping wood is a major major job um, that's why we have the log splitter it the fire that we have is our only source of heat most of the time and um, it's really important that we don't run out it's not cosmetic we don't light it so that it looks cozy it has got to be on else we are very cold um, and the house needs to be kept dry find the log burner reduces damp in the house as well I'm not a massive fan of spiders so that's really important for me um, so we make sure that that is on and in the winter that can be on continuously and um, so chopping wood is a major job and we actually start prepping for that June July time um, when we've got some spare days we're out there uh, Fraser's using the chainsaw we're using the splitter and getting the log piles um, undercover under the barn and drying ready for those first fires in late August early September because we have gas bottles um, that we have to change regularly that's another job so that's another thing that can run out you can be cooking dinner and your gas can run out uh, so that's another thing that we have to keep an eye on and all these things need to be um, ordered make sure that we've got spares that's really important um, because there is no backup um, and so if we run out we have to go without so not only are there household jobs but there's also jobs outside of the house we live in a woodland and to make the most of that woodland we have to maintain it and we have to look after it um, sometimes it floods sometimes it's too dry so when it's flooding we might be um, dealing with that when it is um, too dry we're watering trees if we've got the water watering plants to keep them alive because we don't want to lose them after going to the trouble of planting them all I think I think for Fraser, when you've gone to the trouble of planting the trees yourself, they're really precious and um, we do everything we can to mulch them and keep them um, keep them from drying out during the summer because if we lose any, it is, it's such a shame having planted them ourselves, you really understand the value of each individual tree. One of the main differences for living off grid compared to normal life is um, the skills that you pick up. This is mostly Fraser as he is the one that tends to run the logistics side of things and he has learnt so many skills since he's been here. Um, water filtration, collecting rainwater and filtering it, um, internet, um, having to set up a, um, a router using a sim card and learning what an interface is no idea not computer people but we've had to learn you wouldn't think that you would move to the woods and have to get better at using computers but there you go um, you have to be an electrician Fraser has been 
studying solar for about six months, um, if not longer, and it has been really intense. And he has picked up so many skills, um, wiring, crimping wires, um, connecting things, in, and just watching him learn all of these skills has been amazing. Plumbing, um, having to, um, if your plumbing goes wrong, when you live off grid, um, usually you have to sort it out yourself. And that's what we find. We tend to sort all of our plumbing problems or piping problems out ourselves. Um, we plumbed the water filtration system in ourselves as well. Um, so that was all us. Um, those were skills that we picked up as we went. If you have seen any of our other videos, you may have seen the barn. Um, this is a barn that Fraser built pretty much by himself. He had a bit of help from his dad, but the rest of it was all him. It's oak frame and he had to learn all of the skills that come with that. Um, that was a huge learning curve last year. Really great to watch. Um, and skills that we hope to use again in the future if we're lucky enough to build a house. Whilst that's a massive positive of learning all those skills, um, the self-development has been huge um, and the self-dependence is amazing. But where it gets a bit tricky is that it can get really stressful. And I know that Fraser feels that particularly. He feels the responsibility to keep us warm, safe, comfortable. Um, and so if things start to go wrong, it gets really stressful really quickly because there's a lot riding on these things. If the one of the security cameras isn't working, you don't want to leave because you're worried that your stuff's going to get stolen. Or um, if your electricity isn't working, if your generator goes down, if your solar panels won't work, um, if your water filtration isn't working properly, if you run out of water completely, it's really stressful and it just makes you appreciate those commodities that little bit more, even though they are just normal normal life for people who live in a house and are connected to those public utilities. But for us, we really appreciate them because we've lived without them. We know how uncomfortable it is and that's made a big difference to how we feel about them um, when they are on and when we, everything is going well. Um, it makes us very grateful. So a major plus for living off grid in the way that we live off grid is the connection to nature. Now Fraser and I were both really outdoorsy people before we moved off grid um, but we would both say that the connection that you get living in nature, sort of um, submerged in nature if you will, is very different. Um, the bird song when we wake up in the morning, um, the stepping outside our door and being surrounded by nature, that has a massive impact on how connected we feel to it and because of that our mental health as well life is harder here but we are happier and I think part of that is due to the fact that we are so connected to nature and we spend hours and hours outside every day uh, even when we're working we're still spending the time we're home outside and um, that's a massive thing for us um, that helps to keep us happy um, Grace so absolutely loves being outside um, she completely adores it she is happiest outside for us that is um, that is the biggest benefit I think of living off grid it's amazing or one of the biggest benefits anyway this takes many forms uh, some people who are living off grid are trying to completely move away from the use of fossil fuels um, focusing on cutting down food miles by buying locally sourced um, food or growing everything themselves and being self-sufficient. So for us we are moving towards solar power, we are um, we filter and collect rainwater, um, we have some other things that we're thinking about for the future, maybe the use of harnessing wind power um, and a few other different ideas um, but for now that's the main way that we are looking to use renewable energy. For rewilding, that's pretty obvious, we've talked about it before, um, went from a field that was completely dead, completely exhausted through being used for agriculture and um, we have planted trees, we have mulched, we have um, done everything we can to bring it back to life and now there are birds, there are bugs, there are mice and shrews and voles and snakes and there are birds of prey and gradually this plot is just coming back to life and every year we get something new arrive um, and it's just amazing to watch the change and to think that that has happened because we have made a home for these creatures um, and it's great and um, something that we're really proud of. So that's nearly all of the things I wanted to talk about. I saved the big one and the best one till last and that is being mortgage free. 
I don't know many people our age who live a normal life or live in a normal house set up um, using public utilities that are mortgage free. Um, if you are, you're very lucky and well done. Um, but for most people, they are locked into a 30 year plus mortgage. It's a plane. Uh, we live quite near an airfield, it's very annoying. Um, no off-grid life's perfect, hey? Houses are so expensive and living mortgage-free is the dream. Um, we are now mortgage-free. We did buy a house, we had a mortgage, we then sold it, made some, a little bit of money on it and, um, and we'll never ever have a mortgage ever again. Um, because we use renewable energy, our bills are low, um, no electricity, no water rates, it's fantastic and that has made a huge difference to our finances and a huge difference to the level of stress in our life. Being mortgage free is the best feeling in the world. It is so amazing because what you have, however little it is, what you have is yours and nobody can take it away from you. If I have made living off grid sound like it's hard and challenging, then let this last point be the one that tips you over the edge into thinking that off grid life is for you because I promise you it is the best feeling in the world. So here is my question for you. Do you live off grid? And if so, uh, what do you find to be the main benefits and what are the difficulties? Or are you hoping to live off grid one day and has this video encouraged you or has it put you off? Um, I really hope it hasn't put you off. Living off grid is challenging. Um, there's no two ways about it, but you will learn skills that you never ever dreamed you would be able to master and you will um, live a freer life than you ever thought that you could and that is all because you stepped away from those public utilities and um, chose to live a slightly different way. Oh, hello darling. Looks like perfect timing. Hey darling. Come here. Oh. You're gonna say hey. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions just pop them in the comments below and we'll get back to you. Um, any questions at all, we'll give them a go. Can you say bye? Say bye. Bye. <laughs>